The mission of the Southern California Environmental Health Sciences Center is broadly to develop the investigator teams, the scientific knowledge base, and community engagement needed to reduce the burden of disease caused by environmental exposure. We study effects of air pollution, metals, and persistent organic pollutants, social disparities, and the built environment on major diseases of the brain and lung, on cancer, and metabolic diseases. We investigate effects during critical developmental periods in vulnerable populations and across the life course. My colleagues will explain how we do this. Precision Environmental Health leverages advanced analytic techniques and data science approaches to understand and address the impact that environmental stressors have on human health. So one of the main objectives of the Translational Science Corps is to be able to translate scientific findings from human populations to experimental model systems, such as animal models or in vitro systems, and can facilitate experimental laboratory methods, human population studies, studies in animal models, uh, cell-based systems. As a result, the Translational Science Corps will be able to synergize with center members and increase the scientific rigor of studies coming from the center. So it's a really exciting time uh, in environmental health and health research in general. And this is because we have now the ability to collect really high volume data on individuals, um, so-called omic data. Omics refers to a broad range of technologies. Some of these are more well known like genetics, but some of them are more novel. These include things like transcriptomics, metabolomics, proteomics and some sort of single cell data which allows you to actually look inside of individual cells to understand how those biological processes are working within individual cells. The effect of a pollutant is multi-layered. It's never just because of one thing. You have cellular and molecular mechanisms behind of that that only using uh, human specimens is very limiting. Um, and besides that can be much more expensive. So what we do uh, in our lab is to use single cell transcriptomics to evaluate those spheroids exposed to a pollutant. And then later we can correlate that data with human studies and then use the human specimens only for validation. That's coupled with very sophisticated kinds of machine learning and artificial intelligence that we can apply to those data. So we can put in things like millions of genotypes, many exposures, maybe some protein measurements, uh, maybe some biomarkers that we collect to try to make sense of it all and to try to learn risk factors for outcomes that are well beyond what we've been able to do in the past. One example of precision environmental health is our work on tackling the epidemic of PFAS contamination in drinking water. PFAS, the new forever chemicals, they can leach into water from various sources and they can pose significant risk for health. We value very much bidirectional communications with communities that have been impacted by PFAS in Southern California. We provide water filter to partially mitigate PFAS exposure and as a long-term initiative, we have developed an ongoing collaboration between community leaders and academics try to develop what we call science-based equitable solutions. I direct the Community Engagement Corps here at USC, and with that we collaborate with environmental justice organizations to address issues of industrial pollution like goods movement, metal smelters, and urban oil drilling to build capacity of the communities to both understand the science, leverage community data, and also inform public health actions. I think an important component with even visualizing the data is if the community can understand it. And so when we're able to incorporate Spanish and culturally appropriate curriculum into the report backs and into the data visualization, we're able to increase environmental health literacy in that aspect, but also engage the community and be able to understand how our environment impacts our health. And through this project, we've been building multi-sector partnerships, and this includes local and state agencies, as well as nonprofit organizations and organizations that are on the ground working with communities. And through this relationship building, we were invited by the California Attorney General's Office to provide expert information on the health risks of PFOS exposure at a recent press conference. For a scholar like myself, uh, the future is both really bright and daunting at the same time because 
In the digital era, the world is awash with spatial temporal data. And so what we're trying to do is to collect data about environmental exposures, built environment variables, social environment variables. We use a variety of tools to do this. We use sensors and wearables, GPS tracking and satellites to understand where and when these exposures are happening. And we do this in order to really refine our interventions or target them to the individual. And so we pull all those data together, add them to electronic uh, health records, and the goal is to find new knowledge, new understanding, so that when you're sitting with a doctor or a clinician in an office, they have the full view of who you are. And my group's demonstrated we can do this at scale, so we now do it four times a year with 20 million health records in the Keck medical system. The development of certain diseases, uh, they're multifactorial. So we have things that are genetic background, that are behavioral, and diseases that are being caused by environmental factors. So this platform that we are creating with human spheroids and the omic techniques is going to help us to better understand and address those diseases.